Hello my creative art friends, welcome back to Christine Art Channel. Today we're on day 6 of 12 days Christmas painting challenge and we will explore the power of painting with deeper intention. As many of you know, we've been on this incredible journey with the 12 days of Christmas painting challenge. What's been truly heartwarming is how setting intentions for each painting has resonated with so many of you around the world. I received so many messages from you and I already seen all the artwork you already have done and it is amazing. It's filled my heart with joy. The intentions we have set for each day from letting go of self-doubt to embracing imperfection have not only enriched our art but also touched on deeper aspects of our life. You see, painting isn't just about putting colors on paper. It's about channeling our emotions, our hopes and our desires into every brush stroke, every watercolor stroke we make. It's about making a connection with the canvas that goes beyond the visual and setting surrounding area to boost this experience. Surrounding yourself with beauty isn't just about aesthetics. It's about creating an environment that nurtures your creativity and invites your inner artist to come alive. Whether it's the soft glow of your favorite lamp, the soothing aroma of a scented candle, or the gentle music that fills the air, every detail contributes to the ambience of your artistic sanctuary. When you sit down to paint, take a moment to look around your own space. How can you infuse it with elements that inspire you? Perhaps it's a vase of fresh flowers, a cherished piece of art, or a meaningful quote on the wall. These simple touches can uplift your spirit and elevate your creative process. For day 6, I choose Mandarin. Before starting new challenge day, I write down my intentions, wishes and goals. For today, my intention release routine and monotony. My wish, as this is day six and represents month of June, in the heart of summer, may our lives bloom with courage, beauty, and the strength to face any challenge. My goal, embrace challenges as path to growth. For this Mandarin painting I will be using Indian yellow and I'm painting out pigments so I remember and you can also see adding Sennelier red and also painting out Sennelier red pigment, adding a little bit more of Indian yellow to my first mix and testing on a piece of paper right beside my Mandarin fruit and it's one of the best ways to practice watercolor mixes with real subject in front of you. For the second mix I'm using transparent yellow together with Sennelier Red and I have a little bit muted and slightly darker watercolor mix. Adding pearl and maroon to my watercolor mix and checking with the previous mixes pearl and maroon for the shadow part of this mandarin fruit. Carefully I'm building these mixes and as you can see they're becoming slightly darker with each new mix. Indian yellow together with lemon yellow and a little touch of alizarin crimson, a little bit of manganese violet to calm down this watercolor mix diluted with water and checking on a piece of paper for the inner part of the mandarin. Adding Sennelier red, just checking on a piece of paper, is it good to mix them together to make calmer this yellow mix. Adding pearl and violet and mixing together with pearl and maroon and orange watercolor mixes, checking on a piece of paper and we can see on the white paper how these mixes look. Permanent rose, painting out on the paper, adding a little bit of lemon yellow and diluting with water. Writing down all pigment names that I painted out on a piece of paper, it's always good to remember by writing down. And watercolor mixes that we did, it's always important to make these notes after a while you will open your sketchbook and see all the information. Transferring line drawing. With a graphite stick 
on the other side of line drawing I'm covering evenly graphite layer, turning around, placing on original watercolor paper and outlining with mechanical pencil all the details that I see in reference photo, even the smallest one, everything is important. Checking before removing if everything is transferred. Now using mechanical pencil 0 0.3 I'm going over again outline that I just transferred and at this point it's important not to push too hard especially with yellow and white subjects. With an elastic eraser removing excess amount of graphite of the paper. Yellow subjects, yellow watercolor pigment is super transparent and no matter how many layers you will apply graphite lines can be visible if they are too vivid, too intense, too thick so I'm removing as much as possible so that only I can see the outline, even camera can't show you how transparent it is. Starting watercolor painting of this mandarin composition. Applying with finer tip brush small amount of water layer to the first section that I'm painting and using Indian yellow with Senolia red starting from the shadow area and painting with the very tip of the brush moving towards the lightest part, leaving lightest part unpainted. Carefully studying reference for guidance is everything that I need is there. So when my brush is pausing or I'm not painting, it means that I'm looking and I will be looking all the time. This is my go-to if I want to see details, if I want to see tonal values, where are lights, where are shadows, everything is in the reference. I'm not making up something, I'm not imagining, I have everything in my reference. While I'm painting this mandarin painting, I'm thinking about my intentions that I wrote in the sketchbook right beside this mandarin painting, my wish, my goals, and it's important to write them down so you see them, remember and know them. During these first days of the challenge, I've heard from many of you about how these intentions have helped you overcome some hard feelings in life. It's incredible how a simple act of painting with purpose can have such a profound impact on our emotions and well-being. You see, when we put intention behind our art, we're not just creating visual masterpieces, we are creating emotional bridges that connect us to our inner selves. Each brushstroke becomes a step towards self-discovery and healing. Also meaning of colors that we are painting right now. For example, this mandarin, it's so rich with yellows and reds. It gives peace and calm. For some of you, these intentions may have provided a way to release emotions, allowing the colors and forms on the paper to express what words couldn't. Paper is where you let go of negativity and embrace positivity. Others have shared how setting these intentions has given them a sense of purpose and direction, not just in their art, but in life itself. It's as if the act of painting with intention has sparked a newfound motivation to tackle challenges, seek personal growth and achieve their goals. So as we paint this mandarin together today, I want you to think about the intentions you set in your own art and life, how they affected you, how have they helped you grow as an artist and as a person. As you dip your brush into the vibrant colors of today's palette and apply, apply them to your paper, consider the journey you're embarked on since the beginning of this challenge. 
Have you noticed any shifts in your mindset or your creative process? Have you found yourself letting go of self-doubt, perfectionism or other barriers that might have held you back in the past? For some, setting intention may have provided a newfound clarity of purpose. Perhaps you gain a deeper understanding of what truly inspires you in your art and in your life. The act of intentionally infusing your creations with meaning might have ignited a passion you didn't know was there, motivating you to explore new artistic horizons and take bolder steps towards your goals. Brush stroke after brush stroke with this finer brush, I'm applying layers using watercolor mixes that we pre-mixed. Mostly it's Indian yellow, Senalia red, and also transparent yellow with Senalia red. This is first layer and it's more about tonal values, where are shadows, where are lights, half tones. I'm not going into details, my painting doesn't look like the reference for now and it's completely okay. After a few layers maybe it will start to look more as a reference and as a realistic Mandarin. For now we're just starting. When painting this lower part of Mandarin, take a look in the reference and you will see that the lower part has a reflected light area and this gives a nice feeling when we are looking at this Mandarin that it is a round subject. These reference light areas are so amazing to show that the subject is round, that it's three-dimensional. 
We don't want to paint completely till the lowest part of this peel, uh, dark shadow. Then it will look flat and not so realistic. Just leaving a little gap of lighter area and I will be applying their manganese violet will make this trick of illusion when the viewer will be looking he will think and I will understand that it's something round even on a flat surface. Starting to paint fruit part and here we need to start really transparently lightly and leaving little gaps of white space unpainted. This, th these are things that we see on mandarin fruit, these uh, white parts on the outer part of the fruit and I'm leaving them unpainted with the finest tip brush applying shadow of each section of the fruit starting where it is divided. We see in the reference that there's a little bit of shadow on each piece. Adding more layers, gradually, slowly, no rush. We can always go darker with watercolors. Problem is to keep light areas light. So I always encourage paint lightly, slowly build layers. Darkness, not a problem. To have something light, that is tricky.
building more layers of watercolors carefully, gradually and transparently. Layer after layer we start to see more intense shadows, more vivid fruit part and also peel has its beautiful curve. Lower part applying watercolors there. We want to make everything a little bit more vivid, a little bit more saturated, but that is done gradually. When we are building layers, we will get really this rich and full result. If we are going straight with dark watercolors, then we can end up with flat and poor looking painting. With watercolors, it's all about layers. Patient layers of watercolors gives this rich and natural look at the end. Adding more Indian yellow to my watercolor mix where we mixed Indian yellow with Sennelier red. I want this mix to have more yellow and now applying next layers to the shadow area, building this saturation even more and contrast bigger. Now with a finer tip brush I'm applying little brush strokes, uneven brush strokes because I see on the peel of mandarin there are these dots and texture. I will not be painting each dot and each of that texture but with the brush stroke of different type of brush strokes I'm applying this texture that creates this vi visual effect that we see that something there is visible texture on my painting of the peel as well. If you want to go really realistic with all that peel details it's really about many many hours as we have now this tutorial of actual painting of mandarin is one half an hour long 
If you want to have something really realistic, it takes a lot of hours, a lot of effort. My approach, what I teach, is just the beginning part of realistic painting. If you want to proceed more realistic, you need to push yourself a little bit further, a little bit more into observation and detailing. And these textured brush strokes also go on the very top part of the peel and we see that carefully and slowly these textured peel starts to appear and we see that there is something going on there is this visible effect of texture
adding more details, little cracks inside of the peel using watercolors that we pre-mixed. Nothing is added new. And there you have it, our mandarin painting with deeper intention. Remember, your art has the power to transform not only your canvas or sketchbook, but also your heart and soul. Thank you for being part of this wonderful art community and taking part in this challenge. Keep painting with purpose, my dear friends, and let's continue this beautiful journey together. Until next time, stay creative, stay inspired, and enjoy the process. Thank you.